Pastor Daniel Yao Entry is the lead pastor of the Faith Life Church and is responsible for the vision, values, and culture of our church. He brings practical teaching with simple keys to living the maximized extraordinary Christian life by making the Bible real and applicable to our everyday life. He shares on topics that are relevant to people of all races, ages, and genders. Pastor Daniel has a passion to add value to others out of the experience from his own Christian journey. His personal mission is to inspire faith, ignite hope, and break through barriers through preaching and the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, with a round of applause and a standing ovation, let's welcome our founding pastor, Pastor Daniel Yao Entry. I'm preaching on my zeal for the Lord. 2 Kings chapter 10, verse number 16. And he said, come with me and see my zeal for the Lord. So they made him ride in his chariots. You see, brothers and sisters, this statement was made by King Jehu as he was out to demonstrate his zeal in carrying out the commandment of the Lord. When Jehu said, come and see my zeal for the Lord, what Jehu was trying to connote to us is that zeal cannot be hidden. You will see. When a person is zealous for God, it is demonstrative. The evidence is clear. Hallelujah. Zeal that cannot be seen is fake. Have you seen people who follow politicians? Their zeal is palpable. Their zeal is very strong. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, they are on their go. House to house, going to places, convincing people about their political party. They have a zeal. For it. They move from one town to the other and people are following. They are not being paid, but they are following. They have a zeal. And the evidence is there. Amen. I heard something that when Trump was running the election, 72 hours to the election, the guy did not sleep. He could not close his eyes to sleep. For 72 hours, he did not sleep. Do you know what 72 hours is? Elon Musk, the billionaire, once he launched the rocket, he left and went to Pennsylvania, and he was there for 45 days. It was said that there was a time that um, and Tesla had a problem where, they are, where I think their batteries or their technology. Elon Musk left his house and was sleeping at the factory floor. Zeal was seen the people could see that this man wanted solution and so they received solution you cannot have zeal and the zeal is not seen john chapter 2 verse 13 to 17 and the jews passover was at hand and jesus went up to jerusalem and found in the temple those that sold oxen sheep and doves and the changes of money sitting and when he had made a scourge of small court he drove them all out of the temple and the sheep and the oxen and poured out the changes money and over through the tables next verse and said unto them that sold those take these things hence make not my father's house an house of merchandise and his disciples remember that it was written the zeal of thine house has eaten me up. You know, brothers and sisters, the zeal to add value to another human being's life must cause you to always be on the go for the Lord. Speaking to somebody about God's goodness. Speaking to somebody about what God has done for you and how God can do for the person. You know, sometimes we go to places where they plate our hair or they sew our clothes and we want to tell everybody about it. You're just waiting for someone to say, your hair is nice. You know, it's, shall I have some plug? I can take you to this lady. She will do it. In fact, let me even call the lady for do, do we do that? A zeal. Our zeal must be demonstrated. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus began to beat the people. He began to push things. He said, no, this is God's house. It, it, it cannot be. Somebody, your, your passion must be... God's house cannot be empty. We can't have empty seats. Somebody shout, no more empty seats. God needs people to come and lift up hands and praise him. And I've said, I'm looking for a time in this church where I'll see Rastafarians leading songs. People with tattoos leading songs. All sorts of big, because you see, 
It's beautiful when you give your life to Christ. This week, a guy who bought a shoe for me, when I became a Christian, uh, life was a bit tough. So I'll come and pray, and, and under my shoe, there was a hole. But my zeal for God, I love God. I was always praying. I even forgot about it. When I come and I pray, I forget that under my shoe, there's a hole. But this guy who knew me in secondary school, who knew Rasta, who knew that we used to smoke and drink serious alcohol. Yeah. So this guy who knew me, I was wild when I was in school. <laughs> he bought me a shoe. So this week he came to my office. And we're talking there. He said, do you know why I bought you the shoes? He says, says, I knew who you were. I didn't want anything to stop you in your Christian life. And I wanted to do something for you so that you know that Christianity is sweet. If you come to God, God knows how to take care of you. Someone say zeal. The guy's zeal for the Lord caused him to do something for me to help me stay in God's house. Then I said to him, sir, at that time I was so much in love with God, what I wore or did not wear did not move me, crowd. Someone say, my zeal for God. Listen to me. Genuine zeal for God keeps us in pursuit of God and the interest of his kingdom with delight. When you have a zeal for God, it will keep you in pursuit. You will go after God. Brother, somebody's business partner is in this church. The person has been praying. Whoever is out there has been crying, God, where will I meet that helper? And that person is in this church. And God is counting on you to bring that person so that they will connect. Somebody's marriage, somebody's open door, somebody's access, somebody's 10 years from today, help is on the line. Somebody needs somebody five years ahead of time. And God is counting on you and I to bring those people to God's house. It is zeal that helps us to keep the hands of believers on the plow without looking back. Sometimes you give your life to Christ and Charlie, the temptation is high. I don't know about you, but sometimes you, I, I miss the alcohol. C- can I be real? I miss it. But my zeal for God keeps me away from that. But when a person is, has a zeal for God, sometimes you will sing there by hand, there by hand, boy, be preso, jeje me, me fa be be anota me. But whilst that is going on, and you want to show the guy that you know what's up, then you remember a song, me wa sembi, seme kaya, na me pentem de mara me bua me ho, unya me na seventy. Soon, soon, come, crunchy, so check my name, Jai. Zeal for God. Someone say zeal for God. Even as a businessman or as an individual, you must have zeal and a passion for your work. You cannot just live your life without having a passion or a zeal for that which you are doing. Your commitment to task is what will deliver for you unusual results. But most of the time, we have no zeal. Understand that the work you are doing, it is God that has entrusted it into your hands. And your zeal for God must cause you to excel in whatever has been committed into your hands. Someone say zeal for God. There are many people, can you imagine, if Elon Musk decides to do crusade, how many people will just show up just because of him? But if all of us will begin to turn our workplace as a place where we represent God, and that we don't act out but behave properly what results we can get for the kingdom someone says zeal for god someone says i want a zeal for god you see a genuine zeal for god engenders a lifetime of stewardship both in season and out of season there are many of us we don't know that we are stewards for god our gift, our talent, our commitment. See, your treasure, you are just a custodian of it. God entrusted your gift sets to you so that you will use it to further advance his kingdom. So if you know how to sing, sing. You are an artist, be an artist. You know how to paint, you are a creative, you are an artist, be. Do it for the Lord. Do it for the Lord. You are a nurse. Remember, your zeal for God must cause you to go the extra mile to be a blessing to somebody. So that when you are introducing the person to God, they will serve God. 
I told you people, when I became a Christian and I was on fire for God, there were times I was hungry and Pastor Victor's wife would give me palm nut soup and rice. And her palm nut soup, there's always some, some hint of ginger that you can feel at the back of the soup. So, you see, have you noticed that it looks like all my salvation or commitment to God, it was food? Yeah. Your zeal for God must cause you to be a blessing to somebody. Then it's easy to win the person for God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 to 37. Quickly. Romans 8. It says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? In other words, there are things that can draw us away from God. He says, or persecution or farming. There are times that some people feel persecuted by their siblings, their colleagues, even by a political party. But when these things go on, introduce those people to God. Farming means lack. They work so hard, but there's no corresponding resource. When that is happening, introduce a person to God. Give me the scripture. Or nakedness, or perils, or sword. There are times that we go through difficult. Charlie, have you ever felt naked? Oh, yes. You go and mess up small, and the devil never forgets. And so you don't want to come to church again. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you just watch some porn. And when you finish watching the porn, you are feeling so bad, and you know you prayed about it. Or maybe you even masturbated, or you did. And the devil will remind you you are naked. You are going to church. Pastor Dan will see you. This guy. He will see you. He will call him. Mm. Mm. No, it's not a gospel of condemnation. It doesn't mean stay in that sin. It means repent because God will forgive you. If you ask genuinely to forgive you, God will forgive He says, what shall separate us from the love of God? He says, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that love us. God is saying, no matter what you've gone through, it is not too much for me not to forgive you and love you again. I used to be an idol worshiper. I was being trained to be a fetish priest. So when I came to Christ, I used to struggle that God would love me. Fetish priest though. So I felt, no, God may love some people. He may entertain me, but he may not love me. But God is love. Irrespective of what you've done, he forgives and never remembers. Who remembers is the devil. He keeps reminding you of what you did so that you will no more serve God. But God wants to forgive us. God wants to have a relationship with us. God wants to be a blessing. God wants to use your life to show people who are also going through what you, you've been through that I can change the life story of anybody that gives me the life. Hallelujah. Number three or number four, zeal and graces the believer to serve God as a seed. In other words, the zeal, it empowers you. It empowers the believer to serve God as a seed, which impacts on the generations of such people. You serve God. You serve God what? As a what? As a seed. What do I mean? You are serving God because you want to change your 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 history. You want to change your foundation. You want to change the story of people in your life. In, in, in your family you know you know we all come from all sorts of interesting backgrounds we've all gone through all sorts of experiences but some of the experiences we don't want our children to go through so when you have zeal for god and you are serving god god has a way of changing their story when you serve god he has a way of changing your generational story that which i've struggled very much will not struggle because of my zeal for God. Brothers and sisters, your story can change when you decide to pursue after God and do the things that pleases him. Amen. Hallelujah. You see, give me Psalm 112 verse 1 to 3. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delights greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. Remember, it begins by you. He saying, blessed is the man that delights greatly in his command. So when you become a child of God, when you become a Christian, when you become a follower of Christ, when you give God a chance in your life and begin to live by the things he says to live by, the Bible says it has a transcendent effect. It moves from you to your seed. 
Your seed here could be your business. Because one of the commandments of God is this. He says that, seest thou a man, diligent in his works, he shall not stand before mere men, he shall stand before kings. So when you are diligent with the work or the task that is brought before you, the scripture says you will stand before kings. The Bible tells us this. He says, I return and saw under the sun that the race of life is not to the swift, nor the battle to the strong, nor riches to men of understanding, nor favor to men of skill, but time and chance happens to them all. What it means is that if you want riches, you need understanding because God will give all of us a time and an opportunity. But will you be prepared when those opportunities are released? Time and chance. It happens to who? Them all. So it's not because God favors some people and does not favor some people. But those that have prepared themselves and are ready. And based on this commandment, if you begin to be skillful, he says you will obtain favor. When you go to launch her, you can pay $24,000 for a kitchen. You can pay 320,000 Ghana cities for a kitchen. Is he a better carpenter than other carpenters? Yes. But is he a better human being than them? No. Is he because, because they are Lebanese? No. The difference is that they have honed their skill. They have perfected their craft. And based on the scriptural instruction, anybody that obeys the instruction, whether they are Christians or non-Christians, God will honor his part because they are being skillful with the skill sets. That God has given them. And when you begin to be disciplined and live like that, it affects the discipline of your children. They can't just live anyhow. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. You see, in the natural, when one stops serving, his name gets off the payroll of the organization where he serves. That's why God wants you to serve the interests of his kingdom. Praise the Lord. In the military, when one stops serving, apart from being off the payroll, he also loses his command. Because his authority is only retained as long as he's in service. So, your command over the affairs of life is dependent on your zeal for God. Your command over the affairs of life is dependent on your zeal for God. That's why you must be zealous. That's why Bishop Oedipo said, when you go, go with the gospel of power. You can command sickness and they will leave because of your zeal for God. So you go and the person says, let me pray for you. The scripture tells us that they went preaching. God working with them, confirming the words preached with signs and wonders following. So when your zeal for God causes you to go out and reach out and you go observe the person, the person is not happy. He says, sister, I came with a blessing. Can I pray with you to believe God for whatever it is? Say, I'm leaving. But this money you are trusting God for, God will provide for you before the end of the week. And you just do that and pray with the person and go and watch and see. Things start working for the people. Miracles start working for the people. Testimonies because your zeal for God causes God to back you with his power. Someone say, my zeal for God. Causes God to back me with his power. When a farmer stops farming, his harvest season stops. When you stop being on fire for God, zeal for God, and reaching out the laws, you, your, your testimonies stop. You must connect your destiny to this outreach that we are saying. You must connect your life to God as I reach out to many. Also cause people to reach out to me. You see, zeal energizes believers for delightsome and tireless stewardship that keeps him going no matter what. Your zeal must cause you to tirelessly pursue after God. Because there will be days you wake up and you are tired. Have you ever been to a um, gym? When you go to the gym, eh? Charlie, it's nice. But when you leave and you come back home and you wake up the following morning, it's not easy. I started squatting. I will squat. I will squat. Beginning. By the time I go to 15. My leg was shaking. I kept doing the following one. Charlie, but uh, you discover that the more you go, the less the pain you feel. And the more your body starts sculpting. The more you work for God. The more, if you stop working, the harvest will stop. And God knows how to pay you. 
it is foolishness to be shameful for what is gainful. Why am I saying this? Because, you know, there are many of us, when we say, oh, what are you saying? Please, stop, stop. This one that says, he says he has become a Christian. He, they will laugh at you. No. A, a, a lady shared her testimony with me. She says that she and her husband had been married for five years. And she said to me that, you know, I was trusting God for the fruit of the one I was not getting. And I was always depressed and I was praying and nothing was happening. So one day, my husband said, why don't you stop whining? Because when we went to church, they, I think they go to winners. The man of God said, God is looking for souls. So why don't we go and look for souls? Because we, we are looking for a child. God who is also looking for a child. Why don't we first find God's children for them? And then he will find us, our children. So this lady went out to do the outreach and passed by her cousin's place. When she went to preach to them, the cousin and her friends were there. They started mocking her. Say you, you are coming to preach to us. If your God answers, five years, you have no child. I think five or seven years. You have no child. You are coming to preach. Which God? So they, were, they all started, choo, 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 choo. they were just laughing at the girl. So the girl's auntie came from the room and said, please, stop that. If you not listen, tell her, okay, we'll, you, you next week. But to mock her with her childlessness, it's cruelty. The lady kept her composure and left. And when she went home, she broke and said, God, me and you won't give me a child. I am going to win the loss for you. See how they are mocking me. She cried. Then the husband came home and said, I told you. Then the husband said, forget about them. It has to cost us something for God to visit us because it costed him something to get us saved. Pray. One month after, the lady conceived and gave birth. Many years after, the sister, all their friends, they all got, two of them got married but never had a child. God knows how to find, the, the, the cousin there, no man even came. Because see, God knows how to judge you. It's, it's not yours. You let them mock you, but go on, be on fire for God. Because he's the one who reward. It's not men. It's who will reward? God who will reward. Someone say zeal for God. While we have compulsory retirement age in every organization, in the kingdom, Stewardship has no retirement age. Serving God has no retirement age. Representing God in your marketplace has no retirement age. Because stewardship provides a platform for all of us, even in our old age. It, it provides what? A platform, even in our old age. It has no retirement age. So your age notwithstanding, you can go, oh, my, my waist. Don't forget about your waist. You can go. I'm busy. No, you can make time and go. Someone say, I'll go for the Lord. Abraham began pursuing God at the age of 75. And he did it till he went to heaven at age 175. Abraham. Abraham. Hallelujah. That's Genesis chapter 12, verse number 4. And Genesis chapter 25, verse 7 to 8. When you go, you can check it. Moses was actively in pursuit of his calling till 120 when he departed to glory. Hallelujah. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7. Exodus chapter 3 verse 7 to 10. Hannah was still serving God with prayer and fasting at the age of 84. You can find it in Luke chapter 2 verse 36 to 38. See, so from the testimony of Abraham, serving God is a lifetime opportunity until one draws his life last breath serving god what it's a lifetime opportunity someone say i will serve god so in hebrews chapter 12 verse 12 to 13 it says therefore we must lift up the hands which hang down and the feeble knees and make straight paths for our feet lest that which is lame be turned out of the way but let it rather be healed as we engage with the lifetime race up let's get the loss back to god Let's get the broken back to God. Let's get the depressed back to God. 
Let them not turn to the world. Let them turn. Amen. I'd like you to close your eyes. I want you to pray. Pray to God that God I have a zeal for you and for your kingdom and the things of God. God is counting on you. Maybe the reason why your business has not grown is because you've chosen every other thing but God. But today God wants you to quickly get to know him. I'd like you to pray. God coming to my life. God visit me. God change my story. God, I want to be on fire for you. I want to work for you. I want to represent you even in secret places. God, help me to be a child of God. Help me. I know I've done things that I'm not happy about. But today I've heard that no matter what I've done, you forgive me. No matter what I'm going through, I still have a place in you. I still have a chance with you. I still have access to you. From this day, I will be on zeal for God. I will work for the Lord. Everybody pray. Even among my friends, I will, I will win them for you. I will, I will bring them to you. I'll bring them to you. I'll bring them. Everybody pray. God. Areas where you and God used to be very close. But it looks like now you and God, you are not friends. You've gone through too much. And if I was in your shoes, I'm sure... I'll do the exact same thing. But God is saying, deal with me, not with somebody. You are here, you want to give your life to Christ. I will not call you to come forward. It's a personal decision with you and God. The Bible says, with the heart man believes, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. As you open your mouth, you are confessing your salvation. You are coming into that relationship with God. From which after that, you can ask him for anything. He can guide you. He can lead you. Pray this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of all my sins. I'm sorry for every sin I've ever committed. This day, I receive you as my Lord and personal Savior. Forgive me of my sins. One more time, start a new walk with me. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. And my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Put your hands together for Jesus.